Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. If it wasn't for Andrew's teachings, I would never be where I am today. I would never have victory. I would be living a life of defeat. It was Andrew's teaching that allowed me to develop that faith. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to my Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm in the middle of my third week teaching on 10 reasons it's better to have the ministry of the Holy Spirit than it is to have Jesus in His physical body here with us. That sounds nearly like a blasphemous statement, but Jesus said that in John chapter 16, verse 7. He says, it's expedient for you, it's to your advantage that I go away because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit won't come. He was saying it's better to have the ministry of the Holy Spirit than it is to have Him in His physical body present with us. Most people would disagree with that, but that's because we don't value the Holy Spirit the way that Jesus did. So I've been talking about 10 reasons. We're now on reason number seven, and I haven't got time to go back through everything that I've already taught. This is a free gift to you. This is a little brief summary that I wrote uh, and we'll give this to you as a freebie. We also have DVDs that were taken from my television program and, uh, and CDs, and we have those materials available. But uh, today I just want to jump right into this. I was talking yesterday about the seventh reason that I've listed that it's better to have the ministry of the Holy Spirit is because of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I kind of got stuck on... 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, it says, "...the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all." And yesterday I was really trying to emphasize that it's not only the clergy, it's not only a few people that have these gifts, these supernatural manifestations of God's power in them, but every single member of the body of Christ has been given a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So there's nine listed right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I think that there's another seven listed over in uh, Romans chapter 12. And then in Ephesians chapter 5, there's the five-fold ministry gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And uh, you just need to recognize that there is a gifting on your life. You know, I had this experience with the Lord March the 23rd, 1968, where God rang my bell REVEALED HIMSELF TO ME, AND I TELL YOU, MY LIFE HAS NEVER BEEN THE SAME. AND I STARTED TRYING TO uh, WITNESS TO EVERY PERSON THAT I COULD, AND I JUST TRIED EVERYTHING TO FIND OUT, WHAT IS IT, GOD, THAT YOU WANT ME TO DO? AND IT'S A LONG STORY. I HADN'T GOT t TIME TO GO INTO ALL OF THIS, BUT uh, I WAS IN A BAPTIST CHURCH, AND I WAS TOO RADICAL FOR MY BAPTIST PEOPLE. THEY, were, they LOVED ME BECAUSE THEY KNEW I WAS PASSIONATE ABOUT THE LORD, BUT THEY WERE SCARED OF ME BECAUSE I WASN'T TEACHING STRAIGHT BAPTIST DOCTRINE. AND SO THEY WOULDN'T LET ME JUST HAVE A SUNDAY SCHOOL CLASS AND TEACH THE SUNDAY SCHOOL CLASS AS IT WAS BECAUSE THEY WERE AFRAID OF WHAT I'D TEACH. BUT THEY WERE DESPERATE BECAUSE THEY HAD, I DON'T KNOW, LIKE 20 OR 30 DIFFERENT SUNDAY SCHOOL CLASSES EVERY WEEK, AND EVERY WEEK SOMEBODY WOULD BE SICK OR NOT SHOW UP OR SOMETHING, SO THEY'D ALWAYS HAD A VACANCY, SO THEY WOULD LET ME FILL IN. THEY WOULDN'T GIVE ME MY REGULAR, A REGULAR SUNDAY SCHOOL CLASS, BUT THEY WOULD USE ME AS A SUBSTITUTE WHEN SOMEBODY DIDN'T SHOW UP. AND SO WHAT THIS MEANT WAS THAT they, YOU HAD TO TEACH OUT OF THIS QUARTERLY. THEY HAD A LESSON, AND YOU HAD TO TEACH WHAT THIS QUARTERLY WAS ABOUT. AND THERE WAS NO WAY THAT I COULD READ ALL 20 OR 30 OF THE DIFFERENT CLASSES AND BE PREPARED FOR EVERY SINGLE SCENARIO. SO I WOULD JUST HAVE TO PRAY, AND THEN I, THEY'D, WHEN I GOT TO CHURCH ON SUNDAY, THERE'D ALWAYS BE SOMEBODY, AND THEY'D SAY, HERE, GO IN AND FILL IN HERE. AND I'D OPEN UP TO THE QUARTERLY AND READ A SCRIPTURE THAT I HADN'T EVEN READ BEFORE. THIS IS BACK WHEN I JUST FIRST GOT TURNED ON TO THE LORD. AND I DIDN'T KNOW VERY MUCH. AND I MEAN, IT WAS SOME OBSCURE PASSAGE THAT I'D NEVER SEEN BEFORE. AND I'D JUST SAY, OH, GOD, HELP. AND I MEAN, THE WORD OF GOD WOULD JUST FLOW OUT OF ME SUPERNATURALLY. and. I, AFTER IT WAS OVER, I MEAN, THE PEOPLE WOULD BE BLESSED. I WOULD BE BLESSED. AND I'D THINK, GOD, WHERE DID THIS COME FROM? HOW DID THIS HAPPEN? AND THIS HAPPENED SO MANY TIMES. AT ONE TIME, AS I WAS DRIVING TO CHURCH, AND I HAD TO TAKE THE DALLAS-FORT WORTH TURNPIKE, WHICH was, IS NOW uh, INTERSTATE 30, BUT AT THE TIME IT WAS A TOLL ROAD, 
And as I got to the Dallas side and I was getting ready to pay my uh, toll, I remember I was praying and I said, Lord, I know when I get there, there's going to be some class that doesn't have a teacher. They're going to ask me to teach. They'll give me a quarter and I'll have to preach on a verse that I've never even seen or heard before. But I said, I know it'll be good. I said, how does this happen? How it had happened dozens of times. And I said, how is it that I can minister from a passage of Scripture that I've never even thought of before? And it just flows out of me. What's happening? And right as I was getting ready to pay that toll, I NEVER WILL FORGET THE LORD SPOKE TO ME AND HE SAYS, IT'S BECAUSE I GAVE YOU A GIFT OF TEACHING. AND THAT'S WHEN I FINALLY REALIZED THAT I HAD A GIFT TO TEACH GOD'S WORD, A SUPERNATURAL ABILITY THAT'S BEYOND MYSELF. AND, YOU KNOW, I'VE SEEN THIS MANIFEST MANY TIMES. ONE TIME I WAS IN MOBILE, ALABAMA, AND I WAS WITH DICK BRASWELL MINISTERING THERE AT HIS CHURCH. AND um, I, THAT'S WHEN I WAS RUNNING SIX MILES A DAY, AND I DIDN'T REALIZE THAT THE HEAT AND HUMIDITY DOWN IN MOBILE WAS TOTALLY DIFFERENT THAN COLORADO. AND EVEN THOUGH, um, YOU KNOW, I WAS RUNNING SIX MILES A DAY, I JUST WAS PUSHING IT AS MUCH AS I COULD DO. AND THE HEAT AND HUMIDITY GOT TO ME. I'D ALSO BEEN FASTING FOR THREE DAYS, AND I JUST... IT WAS JUST STUPID WHAT I DID. BUT ANYWAY, THE POINT IS, WHEN I GOT UP IN FRONT OF THE CHURCH ON SUNDAY MORNING TO MINISTER, I TELL YOU, THE WHOLE WORLD WAS SPINNING. I HAD TO LITERALLY GRAB HOLD OF THE PULPIT AND HOLD ON TO KEEP ME FROM FALLING OVER. AND I COULDN'T SEE PAST THE FRONT ROW. I HAD JUST PHYSICALLY EXHAUSTED MYSELF. AND WHEN I OPENED UP MY MOUTH AND STARTED TALKING, IT JUST FLOWED OUT OF ME. AND I COULDN'T EVEN THINK STRAIGHT. AND YET, it, THE WORD OF GOD WAS JUST FLOWING OUT OF ME. IT WAS SO GOOD, I WENT AND BOUGHT THE TAPE SO I COULD LISTEN TO MY OWN MESSAGE BECAUSE I WAS AMAZED. AND IT WAS ONE OF THE BEST MESSAGES I EVER TAUGHT. AND WHEN IT WAS OVER, I WAS THINKING, GOD, HOW DOES THIS WORK? AND IT'S BECAUSE HE HAS GIVEN ME A SUPERNATURAL ABILITY TO TEACH THE WORD OF GOD. NOW, THERE'S, I'M SURE, SOME OF YOU WATCHING THIS THAT THINK, WELL, I DON'T THINK YOU DO VERY WELL, AND I'M NOT CLAIMING THAT I DO AS, uh, YOU KNOW, GOOD AS OTHER PEOPLE AND STUFF, BUT I CERTAINLY DO BETTER THAN I COULD DO ON MY OWN. I WAS AN INTROVERT AND COULDN'T EVEN LOOK AT A PERSON IN THE FACE BEFORE, AND NOW I TALK TO MILLIONS OF PEOPLE, AND I'VE GOT A SUPERNATURAL ANOINTING ON MY LIFE TO TEACH THE WORD OF GOD. YOU KNOW, I GET OPPORTUNITIES TO STAND IN FRONT OF CROWDS AND TALK ON POLITICAL THINGS AND TO DO OTHER THINGS, TO GIVE EXHORTATIONS ABOUT STUFF, BUT IF IT'S NOT IN THE WORD OF GOD, uh, IT JUST DOESN'T FLOW OUT OF ME. WHEN I'M HAVING TO SPEAK IN FRONT OF A CROWD AND DO SOMETHING THAT IS NOT JUST STRAIGHT TEACHING FROM THE WORD OF GOD, I STILL STRUGGLE. BUT MAN, THE WORD OF GOD, GOD HAS GIVEN ME AN ABILITY. IF I HAD TIME, I HAD AN EXPERIENCE WITH THE LORD IN JANUARY OF 1974 WHERE GOD TOUCHED MY MOUTH AND PUT HIS WORDS IN MY MOUTH AND TOLD ME THAT BECAUSE I SPEAK THIS WORD, GOD'S WORD IN MY MOUTH WOULD BE FIRE AND THE PEOPLE WOULD AND IT SHALL DEVOUR. SO ANYWAY, I'M SAYING ALL THESE THINGS TO SAY THAT I BELIEVE I HAVE A SUPERNATURAL ANOINTING FROM GOD TO DO WHAT I'M DOING. AND EVERY ONE OF US IS WHAT IT SAYS RIGHT HERE. TO EVERY MAN IS GIVEN A MANIFESTATION OF THE SPIRIT TO PROFIT WITH ALL. EVERY ONE OF YOU HAVE SOMETHING THAT YOU ARE ANOINTED BY GOD, AND THE KEY TO THE CHRISTIAN LIFE IS FINDING OUT WHAT THAT GIFT IS AND THEN STAYING IN YOUR LANE. YOU KNOW, IF SATAN CAN'T STOP YOU FROM SERVING GOD, AND HE WILL TRY AND STOP YOU AND TELL YOU IT CAN'T WORK, BUT THEN IF YOU PERSIST AND YOU'RE GOING TO GO AHEAD AND, and GOD IS GOING TO USE YOU, IF HE CAN'T STOP YOU, THEN WHAT HE'LL TRY AND DO IS TO GET YOU OFF TRACK AND TRYING TO DO THINGS THAT YOU AREN'T ANOINTED TO DO. YOU KNOW, OUR MINISTRY HAS GROWN TO A PLACE WHERE WE HAVE MILLIONS OF DOLLARS COME IN PER MONTH, AND I NOW HAVE A CASH FLOW THAT I COULD GO START ORPHANAGES, I COULD START RESCUING KIDS OUT OF uh, PROSTITUTION AND SEX TRADE, AND I COULD DO A LOT OF THINGS. AND I HAVE PEOPLE ASK ME TO DO THAT ALL OF THE TIME. BUT I KNOW WHAT GOD CALLED ME TO DO. MATTER OF FACT, I'M IN THE PROCESS RIGHT NOW OF HELPING SET UP SOMETHING IN OUR LOCAL AREA WHERE WE ARE GOING TO GO OUT AND REACH OUT TO THE WOMEN THAT ARE BEING TRAFFICKED, trafficked IN uh, SEX TRADE AND STUFF LIKE THAT. BUT I'M SUPPORTING SOMEBODY ELSE. THAT'S NOT WHAT GOD CALLED ME TO DO. I KNOW MY LANE. 
NOW, I WILL GIVE TOWARDS ORPHANAGES, AND I SUPPORT, I DON'T KNOW, uh, I KNOW AT LEAST 40 KIDS THAT I SUPPORT ON A MONTHLY BASIS FOR 15 YEARS, AND WE SUPPORT MORE KIDS IN ORPHANAGES. AND SO, ANYWAY, I DO ALL KINDS OF OTHER THINGS, AND I'LL GIVE TOWARDS THAT, BUT I STAY IN THE LANE THAT GOD HAS GIVEN ME. AND THE REASON I'M SAYING THIS IS FOR YOU. YOU HAVE SOME GIFTING FROM GOD THAT IS UNIQUE TO YOU. AND IF SATAN CAN'T STOP YOU FROM SEEKING GOD, WELL, THEN WHAT HE'LL TRY AND DO IS TO GET YOU TO WHERE YOU FEEL RESPONSIBLE TO DEAL WITH EVERYTHING, AND YOU START DIVERTING YOUR ENERGIES TOWARDS THAT. YOU DILUTE YOURSELF EVERY TIME YOU DO THAT. IF YOU WANT TO DESTROY A MAN'S VISION, GIVE HIM TWO. PAUL SAID THIS ONE THING I DO, AND THE KEY TO REALLY BEING SUCCESSFUL IS STICKING WITH WHAT GOD HAS CALLED YOU TO DO. SO ALL OF THAT, I'M CIRCLING BACK TO SAYING THAT EVERY ONE OF YOU, WHETHER YOU REALIZE IT OR NOT, YOU HAVE A SPECIAL ANOINTING FROM GOD TO MINISTER AND TO DO SOMETHING. THERE ARE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT THAT YOU HAVE, THAT WHEN YOU FLOW IN THAT GIFTING, IN THAT CALLING, THERE IS A SUPERNATURAL ABILITY THAT WILL CAUSE YOU TO PROSPER BEYOND WHAT YOU COULD DO ON YOUR OWN. YOU KNOW, IF I WAS TO TAKE TIME, I'M NOT GOING TO DO IT TODAY, BUT IF I WAS TO TAKE TIME AND JUST SHOW YOU ALL OF THE THINGS THAT GOD IS DOING IN OUR LIFE, OUR MINISTRY, THROUGH OUR BIBLE COLLEGE AND STUFF, YOU WOULD HAVE TO SAY THAT THERE IS NO WAY THAT ONE PERSON COULD DO THAT. IT IS THE SUPERNATURAL BLESSING OF GOD. AND IT'S BECAUSE I HAVE BEEN FOR 54 YEARS, I'VE BEEN SEEKING GOD, I'VE BEEN LISTENING TO HIM, THE HOLY SPIRIT IS LEADING ME, AND THE HOLY SPIRIT PUT HIS SUPER UPON MY NATURAL, AND I TELL YOU, WE'RE SEEING SOME SUPERNATURAL THINGS HAPPEN. MAN, I COULD JUST CONTINUE ON. I REALLY WANT TO FOCUS ON SPEAKING IN TONGUES BECAUSE THIS IS A GIFT THAT IS CRITICIZED A LOT. THERE ARE ENTIRE DENOMINATIONS THAT THINK THAT SPEAKING IN TONGUES IS OF THE DEVIL. AND uh, IT'S ONE OF THESE uh, GIFTS, ONE OF THESE NINE GIFTS OF THE SPIRIT THAT'S LISTED HERE IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 12. AND THEN IN CHAPTER 14, NEARLY THE ENTIRE CHAPTER IS TALKING ABOUT PROPHECY AND SPEAKING IN TONGUES AND ABOUT RESTRICTIONS AND WAYS THAT IT'S SUPPOSED TO BE DONE. AND SO THERE'S A LOT OF SCRIPTURES THAT uh, TALK ABOUT SPEAKING IN TONGUES. LET ME JUST READ THIS ONE TO YOU HERE AT THE END OF 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 14. IT SAYS IN VERSE 39, IT SAYS, WHEREFORE, BROTHERN, COVET TO PROPHESY AND FORBID NOT TO SPEAK WITH TONGUES. THAT'S AMAZING. IT SAYS, FORBID NOT TO SPEAK IN TONGUES. AND YET THERE'S ENTIRE DENOMINATIONS THAT WILL SAY THAT ANY GIFT OF SPEAKING IN TONGUES TODAY IS OF THE DEVIL. THEY WILL SAY THAT ALL OF THESE GIFTS THAT ARE TALKED ABOUT HERE IN THE BIBLE, THEY WERE FOR THE FIRST CENTURY, BUT THEY DON'T APPLY TO US TODAY. AND WE, AND SO it, THEREFORE, ANYBODY WHO SPEAKS IN TONGUES OR PROPHESIES OR ANY OF THESE OTHER GIFTS CLAIMS TO HAVE THESE SUPERNATURAL GIFTS THAT THESE ARE OF THE DEVIL. YOU KNOW, IF SPEAKING IN TONGUES WAS OF THE DEVIL, HOW COME YOU NEVER HEAR ANYBODY SPEAKING IN TONGUES IN BARS, STRIP JOINTS, AND ALL OF THESE KIND OF THINGS, IN CRACK HOUSES? SPEAKING IN TONGUES IS NOT OF THE DEVIL. AND AGAIN, I GO BACK TO THIS VERSE. IT SAYS, FORBID NOT TO SPEAK WITH TONGUES. AND YET WE HAVE ENTIRE DENOMINATIONS. WE HAVE MILLIONS OF PEOPLE WHO CLAIM TO BE CHRISTIANS TODAY WHO SAY THAT SPEAKING IN TONGUES IS OF THE DEVIL. THAT'S WRONG. DON'T FORBID SPEAKING IN TONGUES. THERE IS A GODLY GIFT OF SPEAKING IN TONGUES. YOU KNOW, I REMEMBER WHEN I WAS PASTORING IN CHILDRESS, TEXAS, THAT I WAS PAINTING HOUSES TO HELP uh, BRING IN SOME FINANCES. AND I REMEMBER I WAS PAINTING THIS ONE WOMAN'S HOUSE, AND SHE WAS ONE OF THE LEADERS IN THE LOCAL BAPTIST CHURCH. AND SO DURING THE TWO WEEKS THAT I WAS PAINTING HER HOUSE, SHE WOULD uh, VISIT WITH ME, AND WE TALKED ABOUT THE LORD QUITE A BIT. AND FINALLY, TOWARDS THE END OF THAT TIME, SHE SAYS, YOU KNOW, YOU'RE A NICE YOUNG MAN. WHY, why DID YOU EVER LEAVE THE BAPTIST CHURCH? AND I SAID, WELL, I DIDN'T VOLUNTARILY LEAVE. THEY ASKED ME TO LEAVE. SHE SAYS, WHY WOULD THEY ASK YOU TO LEAVE? AND I SAID, BECAUSE I RECEIVED THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND SHE SAID, ARE YOU TALKING ABOUT SPEAKING IN TONGUES? AND I SAID, WELL, THAT'S JUST PART OF IT. BUT I SAID, YES, I SPEAK IN TONGUES. AND BECAUSE OF IT, THEY ASKED ME TO LEAVE THE BAPTIST CHURCH. AND SHE SAID, WELL, THEY'D HAVE ASKED YOU TO LEAVE MY BAPTIST CHURCH TOO. <laughs> AND I, I TURNED OVER AND READ HER THIS VERSE. 
And it says, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. I read, I had a New Testament with me and I read this verse to her. And she looked at me just as serious as a heart attack. And she says, Look, there's lots of things in the Bible that we don't believe. <laughs> and when she said that, I know that her pastor, if he would have heard her say that, he would have cringed. But she got the message that they just ignore this. And there's people that just, well, I don't care what the Bible says. We don't believe in those things today. Man, most people don't let the Bible get in the way of what they believe, but you should. This is a command. Forbid not to speak with tongues. Speaking in tongues is one of the most important gifts of the Holy Spirit that we can use today. And there's a lot of reasons for it. And I want to spend the rest of today and and at least tomorrow, just talking about some of them. But I promise you, if you don't have this gift of the Holy Spirit of speaking in tongues, you are missing out on one of the most important things that God could ever give you. It makes a huge, huge difference. Let me just use some verses here. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and in verse 14, it says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, I could literally spend a week or two talking about when you get born again, it's your spirit that gets saved, not your body and not your soul, which your soul is your mental and emotional part of you. Your mental, emotional part, your soul and your body are not saved. They've been purchased and someday we're going to get a glorified body and we also will get our mind renewed so that we will know all things, even as also we are known. It says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So we've got promise that those things are going to happen, but that's when we go to be with the Lord. The only part of you right now that is completely changed, like 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. It didn't say old things are passing away. It says old things are passed away. It's gone. It's over. Now, that's not true in your body. If your body was fat before it got saved, it'll still be fat after it gets saved, unless you go on a diet. If you were dumb before you got saved, you'll still be dumb after you get saved, unless you apply yourself and let the Holy Spirit quicken your memory. Your body and your soul aren't instantly changed, but at salvation, you became a brand new person in the Spirit. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says that you have the mind of Christ. That's not in your physical brain up here. Your spirit man knows all things. It says that in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, that we have an unction. The word unction means a special endowment of power from the Holy Ghost, and we know all things. All things. Again, that's not talking about your brain. Some of you can't even find your glasses, and they're on top of your head. You can't find your keys. You, you forget all kinds of things. That's not talking about in your brain you know all things, but in your spirit you have the mind of Christ and you know all things. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10 says, Put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So in your spirit, man, you have renewed knowledge. You know all things. Again, I could just spend days trying to drive this point home because most people don't let the Bible get in the way of what they believe. They read something like that and just dismiss it. But if it's true that we know all things, then how do we draw on this knowledge that's in our spirit? How do we get it out? Well, again, I go back to 1 Corinthians 14, 14, that when you pray in an unknown tongue, your spirit is praying, but the understanding is unfruitful. That shows you that your spirit is different from your understanding. Your understanding is in the physical, mental, emotional realm. Your spirit is in the spiritual realm. In the spirit realm, you have the mind of Christ, and when you pray in tongues, you are speaking out of your spirit, the part of you that has the mind of Christ. Man, that's awesome. Well, it's, but it says specifically that your understanding is unfruitful. So how do you get it to be fruitful? Look in the previous verse. In verse 13, it says, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Now, I will grant you that this in, in the context. He's talking about how these gifts of the Holy Spirit operate in a church service. 
AND HE'S SAYING THAT THERE SHOULDN'T BE MORE THAN TWO OR, or MAXIMUM OF THREE PEOPLE SPEAKING IN TONGUES, AND EVEN THEN IT MUST HAVE AN INTERPRETATION WITH IT BECAUSE EVERYTHING IN THE CHURCH HAS TO BE DONE TO BENEFIT EVERYBODY ELSE. AND SO HE SAYS, WHEN YOU PRAY IN AN UNKNOWN TONGUE, OVER HERE IN THE FIRST PART OF THIS CHAPTER, IN VERSE 2, IT SAYS, HE THAT SPEAKETH IN AN UNKNOWN TONGUE SPEAKETH NOT UNTO MAN, BUT UNTO GOD, FOR NO MAN UNDERSTANDETH HIM, HOWBEIT IN THE SPIRIT HE SPEAKETH MYSTERIES. AND IN VERSE 4, IT SAYS, HE THAT SPEAKETH IN AN UNKNOWN TONGUE EDIFIES HIMSELF. WHEN YOU SPEAK IN TONGUES, THIS WORD EDIFY MEANS TO PROMOTE SPIRITUAL GROWTH OR TO BUILD UP SPIRITUALLY. SO WHEN YOU SPEAK IN TONGUES, YOU ARE EDIFYING YOURSELF, BUT IN A CHURCH SERVICE, IT'S NOT ABOUT YOURSELF. IT'S ABOUT ALL OF THE OTHER PEOPLE. SO IN A CHURCH SERVICE, IF A PERSON SPEAKS IN TONGUES, IT HAS TO BE WITH AN INTERPRETATION BECAUSE IT'S NOT ABOUT EDIFYING YOURSELF. YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO BE BLESSING THE ENTIRE BODY OF CHRIST. SO THERE WERE LIMITATIONS ON IT. BUT PAUL SAID THAT I SPEAK IN TONGUES MORE THAN YOU ALL. AND HE WAS TALKING ABOUT MORE THAN ALL OF THAT ENTIRE BODY OF BELIEVERS PUT TOGETHER. SO PAUL DIDN'T ONLY SPEAK IN TONGUES IN A CHURCH SERVICE. HE SPOKE IN TONGUES PRIVATELY WHEN HE WAS BY HIMSELF. AND SO IN THE SAME WAY THAT IN A CHURCH SERVICE, A TONGUE NEEDS TO BE INTERPRETED FOR PEOPLE TO BENEFIT FROM IT. WELL, WHEN YOU'RE PRAYING BY it YOURSELF, YOU CAN ALSO PRAY WHAT YOU'RE SAYING IN TONGUES. YOU CAN HAVE AN INTERPRETATION. AND REMEMBER THAT WHEN YOU'RE SPEAKING IN TONGUES, IT'S YOUR SPIRIT PRAYING, THE PART OF YOU THAT HAS THIS MIND OF CHRIST AND THE HIDDEN WISDOM OF GOD. AND SO WHEN... IT'S LIKE IF YOU WERE SITTING NEXT TO A WELL AND IF YOU WERE THIRSTY, YOU NEED TO GET THAT WATER OUT OF THERE. YOU COULD LEAN AGAINST A WELL AND ACTUALLY DIE OF THIRST IF YOU DIDN'T HAVE SOME WAY OF DRAWING THAT WATER OUT OF THE WELL. WELL, YOU, AS A BORN-AGAIN BELIEVER, HAVE THIS SUPERNATURAL KNOWLEDGE AND WISDOM OF GOD ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, BUT it, YOU COULD DIE OF IGNORANCE AND NOT KNOW WHAT TO DO, AND YOU COULD JUST BE DESTROYED BY THE DEVIL BECAUSE YOU DON'T HAVE ANY OF THIS WISDOM. BUT IT'S IN HERE, BUT HOW DO YOU DRAW IT OUT? SPEAKING IN TONGUES. WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, IT'S YOUR SPIRIT PRAYING, AND ALL YOU GOT TO DO IS PRAY AND ASK GOD FOR AN INTERPRETATION TO SHOW YOU WHAT IT IS THAT YOU'RE SAYING. THIS IS NEARLY TOO GOOD TO BE TRUE. I TELL YOU, IF PEOPLE UNDERSTOOD WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT, THERE IS NO REASON FOR US TO GO THROUGH LIFE JUST SAYING, WELL, FURTHER ALONG, WE'LL KNOW ALL ABOUT IT. FURTHER ALONG, WE'LL UNDERSTAND WHY. CHEER UP, MY BROTHER, LIVE IN THE SUNSHINE. WE'LL ALL UNDERSTAND IT ALL BY AND BY. AND PEOPLE JUST WRITE IT OFF THAT WE JUST CAN'T KNOW THE THINGS OF GOD IN THIS LIFE. AND SO THEY JUST MAKE DUMB DECISIONS WITHOUT DRAWING ON THIS WISDOM OF GOD ON THE INSIDE BECAUSE THEY JUST DON'T BELIEVE IT'S AVAILABLE. I'M TELLING YOU, THIS IS POWERFUL. ALL I'VE DONE IS ESTABLISH THAT IT CAN BE DONE. ON TOMORROW'S BROADCAST, I'M GOING TO START SHARING WITH YOU ABOUT HOW YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, YOU DRAW OUT THIS SUPERNATURAL WISDOM OF GOD, AND HOW YOU GET THAT KNOWLEDGE OPERATIVE IN YOUR LIFE. Did you know Andrew Womack Ministries is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest? We pray that we can bless you with the Word of God wherever you are in the world on any of these platforms. Follow Andrew on social media today. I want to let you know that when you support Andrew Womack Ministries, that we also support a lot of other ministries. We actually started the Springs Rescue Mission that is now the largest distributor of food and clothing and furniture in all of Colorado Springs. We've got ministries to orphans. We've got ministry to children that have been caught in the sex trade. Uh, we support uh, pregnancy centers. They've actually lowered the abortion rate in Colorado to one of the lowest in the nation. and. THERE'S JUST A LOT OF THINGS WE DO. SO WHEN YOU SUPPORT HERE, YOU ARE HELPING US REACH PEOPLE ALL OVER THE WORLD. GOD WILL COME THROUGH. MIRACLES ARE WAITING FOR YOU, BUT NOT IF YOU STAY IN THE BOAT. IT IS VITAL FOR THE CHURCH TO BE THE SALT OF THE EARTH AND HAVE THE GOD INTENDED RIGHTEOUS INFLUENCE ON OUR CULTURE AND COMMUNITY. FAITH DOESN'T GIVE YOU THE WHOLE PICTURE. GOD DOESN'T TELL YOU EVERY STEP ALONG THE WAY. HE SAYS, TRUST ME. IS THE FINISH LINE HOW MUCH STUFF YOU CAN ACCUMULATE BEFORE YOU DIE AND LEAVE IT ALL BEHIND?
or is the finish line standing before God? We must rebuild the United States of America, this constitutional republic under God. The time is now. We cannot wait any longer. Learn how to live a life full of God's power when you get Andrew's brand new teaching title, 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit. I'd like to remind you once again that I'm offering this little booklet entitled 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit, and I'm offering this as a free gift to you. Our announcer is going to give you all the details, but I promise you this is something that you need to truly value the ministry of the Holy Spirit and receive the full benefits. So call or write and request this free booklet today. As a special offer, Andrew is giving away his booklet, 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit as his gift to you, absolutely free. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit is also available in a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of July, Andrew will be speaking in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. And in August, Andrew will be hosting Grace and Faith Conferences via live stream to Africa, India, and to Russia. Also in August, Andrew will be speaking in Durant, Oklahoma. Next, Andrew will be in Woodland Park hosting our annual Healing is Here conference with guest speakers Richard Roberts, Audrey Mack, Barry Bennett, Greg Moore, Daniel Amstutz, Carly Terades, plus several speakers from our Healing Journeys testimonies. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. I'm pleased to announce that we now have my television program translated into Spanish. We have a lot of my materials available in Spanish, but let your friends know that we're now broadcasting our daily program in Spanish.